So in the previous lesson, we used a filter to kind of simplify our reference photo and sampled from that photo some base colors and painted that on our avatar. So now we're at a point where we're ready to really build up these colors and start um, adding value. So with that said, let's go ahead and look over at our Layers panel, and you'll notice that I've made a new layer called Color Block. So that's the layer we're going to be working on, just blocking in additional colors and values. Now one thing to note is in the previous lesson I forgot to mention that when we applied that filter to our reference photo, um, you want to make sure that if you're saving out your work, um, not to save over that with that filter applied to it. You may want to save it out as a separate file or take a more non-destructive approach and set your image up to use a small smart filter instead. So just something to keep in mind uh, when making any kind of alteration to um, your reference photo. So let's go ahead and get started by selecting our base colors layer. And I'm going to go ahead and go over to my tool panel and grab my magic wand tool. And I'm just going to select all of these areas where I've got my base color for my skin. These are some of the primary areas we're going to be focusing on first and start building up um, additional colors and values. So with that done, let's actually go ahead and click back on our color block layer. And going back to our tool panel, I'm going to grab my brush tool. And we're going to go ahead and set up our brush tip a little bit differently. Um, we're going to go ahead and go with the hard round brush, just sizing that up a little bit. And going back to our brush panel, I'm going to go ahead and click on transfer only this time. And I'm going to make sure that pen pressure is enabled for both opacity and flow. Now I'm doing this because I no longer need to block in any flat um, solid areas of cover, color rather. I'm just going to start building up color. So having control over the opacity and flow with pressure sensitivity is really going to help do that. So again, we can go ahead and continue to sample some colors from our reference photo. And this really gives us a good advantage to just kind of block in some additional colors. Now later on, we're probably going to want to make a palette off to the side of our image over here with some of the most common colors that we're using. And we can sample from that, and we'll start eventually sampling just throughout the the, uh, the confines of our avatar. But right now we just want to get some some base base values and base colors in. So I'm kind of trying to start from light to dark. As I mentioned in the previous lesson, I'm kind of treating this like I would a watercolor a watercolor painting, where you kind of have to start out working light in watercolor and building up your darks. You can't really go in reverse um, with that particular medium. So as I do this, I'm just looking at my reference photo over here and having simplified it using that filter kind of also allows me to see just where some of the the key shadows primarily fall on the form and so we're gonna not only be adding in additional color but we're also gonna be focusing on the values as well and how well these values read at a smaller size now often we uh, go under the misinterpretation that color is the most important thing when applying it to any kind of image but it's really it's really the 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 values the impression of form is mainly supported by values and not so much color so we're going to be really focusing on getting our values right and not just the colors so I'm just kind of blocking in where I see some of these main shadows just on the on the form overall and periodically we may want to just zoom out and just see how that shadow reads now what can often happen as we shrink our avatar down to a smaller size is shadows that may be too dark can just get really muddy and it's just going to create a lot of confusion when trying to um, make that avatar read visually clear at a small size. So I'm just kind of going around roughing in some where some shadows are just looking at my reference image here and I may want to go ahead and just sample from some other areas here and as I do this, I'm just holding down Alt, still using my brush tool, which allows that eyedropper to appear. And he's kind of got this 5 o'clock shadow kind of around his, his mouth area. So I'm just kind of sampling from some different areas to bring that in. Now, at first glance, it looks kind of gray, which, which, is, which is fine. But there are a lot of colors that a camera sometimes doesn't interpret just right. If we were looking at this guy um, in real life, in person, and we were painting him, we may see some colors that the camera might not pick up. So I may want to actually bring in 
just a little bit of blue into that stubble. And this is just going to add to add to the overall visual appeal of our avatar. So right now, I'm not worried about everything looking just super perfect, super clean. I'm just roughing in, blocking in where we've got some sh just sh different shadows on here. So we've got a lot of highlights over here on this side of the head, and I'm going to want to be careful not to blow any of those out too bright. We're going to try to really keep a good balance between our lights and our shadows just on this image. So kind of coming around here on the screen right side, just kind of blocking in some of these highlights that we have over here. Just some of the very noticeable ones. So I'm already starting to get just what little we've done here in just just around six minutes. We've already started to develop the form out. Our avatar has a lot more dimension and form, and I think it's going to read well when we shrink it down. All right, it's, it's looking pretty nice. Let's go ahead and zoom out once again just to see how things are looking. And at this point, I may want to go ahead and hit Control D on my keyboard, just remove that selection. I think we're at a safe enough point to do that now. And I'm just going to periodically go over here to my swatches panel and start bringing in just some additional colors that I see. I may want to pull some green into this shadowed area. You'd be surprised how much green and blue shows up in the face under different lighting situations. Just kind of blocking in some of these different areas. Going back over here to my reference photo, may want to grab just some other values to work into our avatar over here. And he kind of has a little bit of a shadow area over here. And just zooming out again. Let's go ahead and focus on the hair too while we're at it. And I may just want to bring in some black. He's got pretty dark hair. And just kind of right here in the center, we have kind of that, that darkest area. This is kind of what you would call, you know, from the lighting standpoint, where the light really meets the dark area. We have kind of what you call the core core shadow, if you were thinking of his head kind of like a sphere. So just again blocking in to some real rough rough colors. Once we get all our colors and our values pretty much roughed in, then we can focus on just starting to blend everything together, make everything look nice and clean so it'll register well at a small size. All right, that's starting to feel feel pretty nice, starting to get an idea of the form. I'm just trying to study how these how these values differentiate on the hair. Let's go ahead and zoom out one more time. And if we look closely at his eyes, he's got a little bit of orange in there too. So I may want to bring uh, just a little bit of little bit of orange in. Very nice. And he's got a highlight on his nose too. Kind of has a sharp sharper highlight area right along the side there. Now I'm also putting to account that I turned some parts of the face. You know, in the previous lesson I was talking about turning turning the nose to look a little bit more forward just so everything reads a little bit better. I kind of turned that ear on the screen right a little more forward just so it wouldn't come off as visually confusing when shrunk down. And those are just some things that you want to keep in mind when working on something like this that will be shrunk down. So I'm just kind of looking at the lips, kind of bringing in some different value, different colors of pink and red into the lips. You may want to add a little bit of a, a little bit of a highlight just coming across there. 
All right, that's starting to feel pretty nice. I'm liking where this is going. Now, just zooming out, I can see that we've got some areas that are getting a little too dark, a little too muddy. And so we're going to definitely want to keep an eye on that, especially in the next lesson as we begin to start blending some of these some of these colors and values together. So I just brought a little bit of a little bit of red into his cheeks. All right, that's feeling pretty nice. So in the next lesson, we're going to basically continue on painting our avatar and we're going to start really refining and blending everything together, blending all our colors and values together. So we'll see you then.